Isaiah 7, 14, where the text says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And so this is obviously a text in Isaiah that's prophetic of the virgin birth of Jesus. Now, what Jews are very quick to point out is that when you go to the Hebrew, the Hebrew text, the word uh, that is being uh, translated here as virgin is not the word that they use for for virgin. I think uh, I I actually didn't look this up, but I believe out of memory that the uh, in the Hebrew, I think it would have been the word Bethula that could have been used for virgin. But instead, the word Alma, yeah, the word Alma is used, which actually means a young woman, which uh, doesn't necessarily mean virgin, right? Mm -hmm. So that's right. So what? Yes. Yeah, so what happens? Is that you know? So they're claiming that we're wrong, or that the, you know the the uh, that the Christians are wrong uh, to translate it in such a way. But the reason why we uh, we see that the Christians uh, actually have done that is because when it came to the uh, Septuagint, which is the Greek translation, which you know Jews today uh, don't uh, are not very fond of, of the, that particular translation, and they don't they don't like to uh, use they they don't use or, or make reference. To the, to the Septuagint, but uh, uh, nevertheless, that it was done by Jews. This was translations that were done by Jews. In that particular uh, translation, it actually uses the word uh, Parthenos in the Greek, which actually means that it's a woman that is actually uh, sexually pure. And so, as we know, a lot of the texts actually that are in the New Testament are actually quoted from the Septuagint. So this is one of the ones where we see how they actually did have this particular understanding. I do want to add another another thing too, though, which is that we got to remember that you know the Jews were a holy people. So if you have a young lady, right, um, just as well as it should be with, within the, within a Christian community, if we have a young lady, we don't expect a young lady to be uh, sexually active, right? We but to be chaste. And so in those days, in particular, you know, even if you would have been mentioned in Alma, it would have been a woman who would have been a sexually pure woman, you know, just because she by age and the custom and culture, and obviously, you know, the, the, the adherence uh, to the law. And so that here we see that uh, that's why the, the Christians uh, uh, went ahead and, and translated it that way, because when it came to, to showing it in the, the different translation. Oh, excuse me. Yes, yes. The why, yeah. What? Yeah. No, the Christians, the Christians translated it that way, you know. Meaning the Christians translated it that way because of the fact that the Jews had translated it in that fashion well, in the Septuagint. Well, specific, just, just to avoid any confusion, when Matthew quotes this passage, he's quoting from the Septuagint. Matthew didn't make up the translation. The translation had come out a couple hundred years uh, more whereabouts before Matthew was born. And so yes. what we have in Matthew chapter 1 in that quotation from Isaiah 7.14 was from a Jewish translation into Greek, which is known as the Septuagint. But I, I would add, and people, people tend to misunderstand because words have a semantic domain. In other words, you can have one word, but the word has a number of different meanings and applications depending on the context. And so the question is, what is an Alma in Hebrew? And I actually did a Sunday school on this, which is on my YouTube channel, where I, where I went a lot longer getting into the, the whole issue of this. But just briefly, the word Alma simply refers to a woman or a, a, a young woman of marriageable age. Now, what in the ancient world was a young woman of marriageable age. Was it a woman who had graduated from high school and gotten her degree and gotten a job? No, it was a woman who had already started puberty and was now able to have children. She could already ovulate, okay? So this could mean an 11-year-old girl, a 12-year-old girl, a 14-year-old girl, you know, anything within. The, and so even to this day, now I know that chastity is not, shall we say, the most popular thing in our modern culture. But if you go to a high school or a Catholic school and you're, or a middle school, for example, and you're, you're around girls that are in the, within the age groups of about 12, 14 years old, whatever, are we going to say that none of them are virgins? It, it is illogical to think that all of these girls are unchaste. So, yes. Now, are we saying that all the ladies in the ancient world, all the Almas, these are, these are not married women. All the Almas were chased? No, of course not. There's always been sin. There's always been people that get carried away and do what they're not supposed to do. But my point is that an Alma 
it doesn't you don't put on a piece of paper and you say alma equals virgin but it doesn't right. exclude that if you go to a room full of almas with young women of marriageable age there are going to be virgins within that group and so for Especially in Jewish Jews, culture at the time Yes, and the, and there were places. Now, there's been work done on this by uh, by people like Michael Heiser and other and other people. You can actually go on YouTube, look up uh, Virgin Birth or or Virgin Birth on Michael Heiser, and you'll see some videos that he has on this issue. And he talks about how even the word Bethula, you'll find. Uh, I think there's a verse in the Old Testament where the word Virgin, where the word uh, Alma, and then there's a third term that is all used to describe this, the the same people, uh, and so. The, the issue here is that the, the term Alma, within its semantic range of meanings, virgin was one of those meanings. And so when you look at the Septuagint, the individual Jews, not Christians, Jews who translated the word Alma into Greek used the word Parthenos, which means that they understood the word Alma to refer to a virgin. So this is not something, it's not a mistake that Jews made. It's not a mistake that Matthew made. He's simply quoting the text. And so this, at the very least, means that at least some Jews believed that the Alma of Isaiah 7, 14 prefigured a woman that was a virgin. So uh, it's, it's really not a mistake uh, as much as people want to make it look like. Yeah, and thank you for that clarification, because I, I think that is a good distinction that you're making that that it wasn't that Matthew decided to translate it that way. He's quoting from the Septuagint. So it was the Jews who had translated it that way, and he's using that text to show its prophetic basis.